Hi, my name is Megan, wife, mom, global leader, scientist, and just like you, navigating dinner time and creating balanced meals for the family. At our latest meal discussion, my youngest asked me, Mom, are all fats bad? No, they're not, but that's a great question. I wanted to dive into that topic with all of you today. So fats are natural and an important part of the human diet. Fats help store energy, form cell membranes, create myelin coatings for nerves, and help transport those fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. The four types of fats I would like to cover today are saturated, trans, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. So let's dive in. Saturated fats are solid at room temperature and include things such as butter and cheese and eggs and milk and meat. Saturated fats tend to raise LDL, the bad cholesterol. So let's begin the scavenger hunt with the family. Go to your kitchen and identify those items I just listed off, bring them into a central location on the table or counter, and label it saturated fat. Raises LDL. Trans fats also found naturally in cheese and milk and eggs, but also in artificially fried foods. Again, those fats do raise LDL, the bad cholesterol. For monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, they're liquid at room temperature and they lower LDL. So create another bucket on that location. And for monounsaturated, go find things such as avocado or olive oil or peanuts and bring it to the counter and put it into the location of lowering LDL, that bad cholesterol. For polyunsaturated, this is things such as cold water fish, nuts, or even vegetable oil. Bring one of those items to the counter, label it polyunsaturated fat, and also know that it lowers LDL, the bad cholesterol. So now, to enhance our understanding of the fats we just discussed, I thought a serving size experiment would be the perfect experiment to help us understand mindfulness of what we're putting into our bodies. This one is good for adults and kids. Step one. Go find your favorite snack in the pantry or the kitchen cupboards and bring it along for the journey of science. I chose chips and salsa. This is my favorite snack. And I have a tendency if the chip clip is off, I will graze throughout the day, but I'm also a mom. I eat my children's leftovers, no food left behind. And so chips and salsa is one of my weaknesses. So this is a great experiment for me as well. After you grab your bag of snacks, I want you to look at the nutrition facts. So for this one, nutrition facts, a serving size is about 10 chips. You take out 10 chips, you put on the plate, and you show your family this is one serving. Then you get a kitchen scale, and you weigh out exactly seven grams or whatever the total fat content is in the item that you selected, and you do a visual experiment. I also do the fun one. I take the entire bag. If I were to sit down and just had one of those days that I ingested this entire bag of chips, how many grams of fat would I be putting into my body? And I'm one step ahead of you. I already weighed this out. And as you can see, if I eat this whole bag of chips, this is how many grams of fat I'd be putting into my body. And so this is a great experiment just to be mindful. And if we put energy in, make sure we have energy out and we balance it with some of those critical activities that keep us healthy. So for this experiment, again, your favorite snack item and then an awesome beaker. You can just use the glass as well. I use water and food coloring to help showcase what the grams look like and then a kitchen scale. So have fun, dive in and learn about serving size. So after you put away all the items for the first experiment, I want you to sit down with a pen and paper and start brainstorming how does this information relate to agriculture or plant science, as I'm a plant scientist. Today I'm going to focus on canola oil, a beautiful crop. Canola oil is an unsaturated fat, and it's actually known to be better than saturated fat. But does that mean that we should only eat unsaturated fat? Not exactly. We need both saturated and unsaturated fats in our diets, but it's important that we consume them at healthy limits. Trans fats are produced by taking liquid oils and making them more stable. 
when the health implications of artificial trans fats became widely known and studied, companies switched over to using more saturated fats, which we found out today tend to raise LDL, that bad cholesterol. So in an effort to create a better, stable fat to use in mass-produced foods, this is where omega-9 canola oil came into the picture. Corteva Agri Science's portfolio of high-stability, high-oleic oils includes canola oil, the omega-9 canola oil, soybean, and sunflower varieties. Now, both conventional and non-GMO options are available for canola oil. Now these high oleic oils are naturally stable, they're traceable, and they offer health benefits that do not compromise oil performance or food taste. The healthier version of trans fat. Scientists are able to create better crops for farmers through plant breeding and biotechnology techniques. For the canola oil example, scientists have bred several generations of plants to produce seeds that have beneficial profiles with the ability to produce oils that are high in monounsaturated fats, low in saturated fats, and have zero trans fats. Now biotechnology is another technique scientists use to help create better crops for farmers. This technique allows scientists to insert a favorable gene into the crop to improve its ability to grow and improve its overall nutrition. By using the canola oil described today, more than 1.5 billion pounds of trans and saturated fats have been removed from the North American diet. That is incredible. Are all fats bad? No. Fats are natural and important part of the human diet. Today, we dove into background research, we constructed a hypothesis, we performed an experiment, we analyzed our data, we drew a conclusion, and then we applied our information that we learned into the agriculture space with the canola oil example. So for one final experiment, utilizing those key principles we covered today, I want you and your family to head to the pantry and the kitchen and identify and collect as many different cooking oil bottles as you can. Bring those cooking oil bottles to a central location on the counter or table and have a pen and paper ready to go. Start making observations. Tell me similarities and differences. And after applying today's lesson around fats, Tell me which ones are more nutritious and why. Science is fun and even more fun with the family. So roll up your sleeves, dive in, and enjoy.